Hello, my name is Andy Rubino. I work with Ohio Township. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director there. And today we'll be reading How to Find a Bird by Jennifer Ward. There are a lot of ways to find a bird. That's the wonderful thing about birds. To find a bird, first you'll want to blend in and move slowly. Quiet is good too. So quiet, you can hear your heartbeat. Don't just look up to find a bird. Look down, low to the ground, or some birds forage, seeking things hiding in the earth. Look down where some birds sneak snacks. Look down where some birds splash. If you take a walk, watch your step. Some birds nest on the ground. So don't just look up to find a bird. Sometimes you can find a bird by looking straight ahead. You will have to have a sharp eye, sharp as an eagle's eye. Birds are the cleverest blenders of all. At first you may not see them, but if you wait, if you're still, and if you're quiet, you'll see. You're just as clever as a bird. Of course, you can always look up to find a bird too. You can look up high in the sky where birds fly. Sometimes when you look up, you'll find a bird simply sitting. If you could perch high in the sky, what might you see? If you want to find a bird, don't be tricked. Some birds are stealthy. There it is. Wait a minute, where'd it go? Was that even a bird? Sometimes you don't need to find a bird. It will find you. Some birds will announce their presence when they are near or announce your presence when they see you. And if you feed them, they will come. Then all you need is a window to find a bird. Some birds can't be found at all unless you read about them. These birds are extinct, which means they no longer exist. But the best way to find a bird, if you want to find one, is to close your eyes. Did you hear that? Did you hear that bird? That's the wonderful thing about birds. This is Stacy from Fern Hollow Nature Center. I am really excited for the upcoming story walk that's going to run May 3rd through May 28th. And I'm very excited that Fern Hollow is one of the sites this year. Um, we are going to do The Hike by Allison Farrell. We are going on a hike. This is Wren, Elle, Hattie, and Bean. It is our favorite thing to do. Look at all the fun things they're seeing already. In the beginning, we run like maniacs. Hey, wait for me. Until a ripe patch of thimbleberries slows us down. L teaches us how to make leaf baskets. Like this L? Yes. Oh look, they have a sketchbook. We may have eaten too many berries. Is that even possible? I thought we were saving some for later. The hike gets steep 
and the trail narrows. Ack, Patty, how did you get up there so fast? We get lost. Pretty sure we're not supposed to cross a river yet. Uh oh, the map is upside down. That's probably not good. Did we go left after the berry patch? Right, I think. Ren, what's another word for blue? Azure, cerulean, cobalt? In no time, we get back on track. We're halfway there. Who made these footprints? A deer walks past and Bean sneezes. The deer vanishes so quick, we wonder if it was ever really there. A light rain comes and goes. The birds are happy. We listen to them chirp and chatter in the trees. Oh, there she's drawing the birds. Hattie gets tired and Elle offers to carry her. Soon, Elle is tired too. Giddy up, she says. <laughs> I can't do this much longer. Rides over. It's getting chilly. At the top, Wren takes out the flag, Elle reads her poem, and Hattie releases feathers into the wind. Now they're headed back down. Here they go, headed back home. It's dark out now. Look at their amazing journal in the back of the book. They saw barred outlets. They saw an amazing log with lots of amazing things on it. They saw a type of J. Oh, they saw a honeybee swarm. They saw some amazing mushrooms and some very interesting insects. The end, you guys. I hope that we see you at Fern Hollow and actually at all of the other properties to enjoy these wonderful books. Hello, um, my name is Barbara Carrier, and I am mayor of Glen Osborne and also on the board of Mary Roberts Reinhardt Park. It's in Mary Roberts Reinhardt Park where you will, can walk and read this story again. The title of the book is Fairy Science by Ashley Spires. Esther does not believe in magic. This is unusual because Esther is a fairy and fairies are all about magic. They use magic wands and they mix magic potions. Some fairies even make magical fairy dust. Shaboom! Esther is pretty sure that that's just dandruff. She's the only fairy in Pixieville who believes in science. Esther prefers facts, data, and hard evidence to wishing on stars. Unfortunately, the only thing they teach in fairy school is magic. Class is very frustrating for Esther. Fairies were born with a drop of rain, passed through a rainbow, and landed on a flower bud. When the flower bloomed, the first fairy took flight. And for Miss Pelly Petal. You can see from this chart, it is more likely that fairies as a species evolved in response to influence such as environmental and diet. She doesn't look very happy with that one. Esther can't help observing the world differently from everyone else. Where other fairies see a path to hidden gold, Esther sees light and water colliding. Follow the rainbow. Uh, 
The water helps us see all the colors that are hidden in the sunlight. That is called dispersion. When they see, da see a dangerous omen, they, she sees, condensation. When temperature is just right, water droplets are suspended in the air. Boom! When they see faces of the spirits, she sees erosion. Rocks get worn away by water and wind. The faces are just your imagination. I don't think they're listening, said the bird. Esther can't wait to teach the scientific method to her fairy mates. Ask a question, do some research and find out more. Make a hypothesis, a fancy word for guess. Do experiments, study the results, draw the conclusion, Eureka! Or you could just trust us to do magic. She shows them the periodic table. This is a list of all the elements that make up the whole universe. No, not all of them. Where are the dreams, the wishes, and the sunshine? She even demonstrates gravity. Whee! Gravity is why things fall down instead of up. But we could go up, so we must be magic. They just don't get it. Ping. That was Vroosh. That was definitely gravity. Look at all the leaves falling down. There is definitely something wrong with this tree. It's wilting. The fairies do their very best. They cast a spell, alakazoo. They make magic talesmen. They even do a mystical moonlight dance. But nothing works. The tree keeps on wilting. Esther has a question. Hmm, why is the tree wilting? She does some research. What I know about trees. Number one, they have leaves. Number two, they have roots. Number three, they are pretty. Number four, they grow out of dirt. She makes a hypothesis. She tries some experiments. She studies the results. Now look at the other fairies are starting to watch. At last, Esther draws a conclusion. Eureka! The tree needs more sun. Simbala, simbala, boo. Simbali, I'm doing some magic to save the trees. This is the teacher. But Esther went all the way up and let the sun shine through the canopy so it hits the tree. Now she waits for the sun to do its work. And waits. And waits through seasons, through the winter cold. It took a while, but the tree is looking positively perky. But she did it. Esther has proven the power of science. Miss Pelly Petal did it. Magic saved the tree. At least she thought she did. She might not have changed the other fairies' minds. Hip, hip, hooray! Sigh. But Esther has inspired some questions. How did you do that? Can you teach us science? And that's where every good scientist starts.
everyone, it's Julie here with Allegheny Land Trust, and I'm really excited today to read you the book, The Hidden Rainbow by Christy Matheson. I really love this book because it gets to count insects and bees, and you also get to see lots of different colors of flowers. Now, this is a book you can see for yourself if you go to Audubon Greenway and walk our trails and enjoy our story walk. So hopefully after I read the book for you, you guys can go outside and enjoy the story walk and the hidden rainbow. really like the art in this book too. One little bee peeks out to see a world of gray and snow. She's looking for bright colors and she needs you to help them grow. Here's our little worker bee friend hiding in the tree. First, please brush the snow off the budding camellia trees. These trees are still covered in snow. Look, the flowers are red and their nectar feeds two bees. One bee, two bees. Tickle the very tops of the growing tulip trees. Very soon, the bees will find orange. And can you see three bees? I see three bees. Do you see three bees? One, two, three bees. Next point to the crocus shoots, just beginning to sprout. Look at all these crocuses. We have crocuses here in southwestern Pennsylvania, but they're normally like a purple color. Four bees are eating pollen. Now the yellow has come out. Now it's time to search for a special four leaf clover. So we've got four bees. One, two, three, four. Now let's see if we can find a four leaf clover. What luck, a field of green with five bees zooming over. One, two, three, four, five bees enjoying the clover. Please wave the bees back to their hive because clouds are gathering for a rain shower. Bees don't like the rain, but it's important for the flowers. Here's our little worker bees hiding in their hole in the tree from the rain. Blow the forget-me-not buds dry as the rain clears from the sky. The sun is shining, blue is blooming, and six bees are buzzing by. One, two, three, four, five, six bees. Next, trace a line straight down the orderly hyacinth row. Seven bees are foraging in blooms of indigo. You're practically done. Now blow a kiss to the lovely lilac trees. Look at all those beautiful dark purpley blue flowers. The violet blossoms are brimming with nectar for eight bees. Let's see if we can find all eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bees on that plant. At last, Get ready to find nine bees on the rainbow you grew, but the story is not over. These bees have work to do. My goodness, let's see, nine bees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bees. Can you see 10 humming bees getting busy in these trees? They're spreading so much pollen, you just might have to Achoo! Sneeze! And why are the bees spreading pollen? So something you eat can grow. Thanks to the bees, you'll soon have your own delicious rainbow. Oh my goodness, look at those red apples and the orange peaches and the yellow pears and there's green apples too and purple and blue plums and even some blackberries too. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed The Hidden Rainbow by Christy Matheson, and I hope you can get out to Audubon Greenway to read this story for yourself. Okay, my name's Tom Belcastro. I was uh, on council in Leeds Dell, and uh, I'm on the Parks and Rec, so this is for Henley Park in Leeds Dell. Uh, the book I'm about to read is Hank's Big Day, and it's a story about a bug. Hank's house, it's a big rock. 
Hank, a pill bug crawls out from under. This is Hank. Hank shimmies through the tall grass. He nibbles on a dead leaf. Breakfast over, Hank creeps past a cricket. He comes upon a warm tide in a knot. This warm's tied in a knot. And an ant carrying a potato chip. An industrial ant. A weird worm. A curious cricket. Yikes! A scary grasshopper. Hank climbs a long stick. He continues climbing the stick. Hank exercises stick. He finishes climbing the stick. Then he curls up into the tall grass. Hank scoots along and finds himself on a sidewalk. He looks both ways and starts to cross. He through a pothole. He stops to inspect a rainbow made of chalk, some stripy art. He climbs on top of the bottle cap, a slippery round thing. Hank finishes crossing as a boy rides by on a skateboard. Too close for comfort, he says. <laughs> Hank trudges onward and comes upon a smiling face. She is dressed up like her hero, the famous flyer, Emilia, Emilia Earhart. Hank's best friend, Amelia. While Amelia is help, Hank crawls onto her helmet. This is Amelia right here. Amelia jumps up, tilts her arms, and takes off with a Hank aboard. Amelia and her co-pilot, Hank, the pill pug, are crossing the Atlantic Ocean in their airplane. Together they run, run around the front yard, an amazing view of the world. The brave pilots over England and wave to the Queen. Hello, Queen. Amelia and Hank zip through the side yard. Amelia's dog is fast asleep in her doghouse. In Paris, the plane just vis misses the Eiffel Tower. Amelia lands near Café La Vellette Bug. The flyers circle a map, maple tree, and head on a picnic table. Hank nibbles a peppermint leaf and Amelia drinks from a juice box. Snack break over, Amelia puts out her hand and Hank and crawls back on board. They run across the yard and down the driveway. Amelia's brother Aaron is playing with his army guys. Hank and Amelia return to America. They make a daring landing as millions cheer. Amelia sets Hank on a mossy rock where she found him. Hank <coughs> gazes at, at Amelia. What friendship looks like, he's looking. Hank crosses the sidewalk, curls up and plays dead, and passes the grasshopper. Treats down exercise stick, the ant, the worm, and the cricket. Then he takes a big bite of a dead leaf. And when day is done, Hank crawls under his rock at last. Home sweet home.